Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of our open source interview series. My name is John Harrell. I'm a developer advocate over here at Prisma. And joining me today is Mattia. Um, Mattia, you're with uh, Wasp Lang. Uh, why don't you sort of introduce yourself and then and then tell us about Wasp? Sure. Uh, thank you, John, John, so much for the kind intro. Uh, yeah, shortly about myself. As John said, I'm one of the creators of uh, Wasp, which is a full stack framework. Uh, built on top of React, Node.js, and Prisma. So basically, you know, our mission is to develop a similar experience to Ruby on Rails for those who know it. So let's say, you know, like a very opinionated, but powerful and, you know, everything works out of the box experience for developing a full stack web app. So everything is, as John said, fully open source. And you can also, you know, deploy your app anywhere, wherever you want. That's that's awesome, and it sounds like you recently had a, a launch week as well recently. So you know, belated congrats on that, and and you know, is it's it's really exciting to see all the cool new stuff coming out of Wasp. Cool, yeah. I just wanted to start you know from the beginning because not everybody might be familiar with uh, what Wasp is, how it works. So maybe just a couple of slides about how it started, who's behind it, and you know, like how does it work in briefly, and then you know, maybe some questions if you have, and then we can dive in into the actual demo. Sure, that sounds great. Cool. So Wasp, developing full stack web apps faster. As I said, kind of this is our uh, mantra. Just make it faster, make it easier. And a bit before we start, actually, who is the behind? Who is behind this project? So it is five of us currently. We are kind of a remote team based partly in Croatia, partly in Germany. So here you can see me on the right side kneeling. Then on top of me is my twin brother, and then also we have Philip, Michovil, and and Vince. So this is the core team, of course, and we have open source contributors, supporters, and, and fans. So, you know, just to give you a bit of a uh, taste why why you know, why we didn't start the Wasp, because, you know, there are so many web frameworks nowadays, and, you know, it, it's almost a meme creating a new web framework. So, you know, we also kind of felt the same, but on the other hand, when you Google web development, is still kind of, you know, with all the cool frameworks and features we have, still the main question is, you know, why is it so boring? Why is it so hard? Why is it so complicated? And on the other hand, I always love to hi highlight, you know, that web development is important, you know, which comes up in the first uh, first result. Because, you know, whatever cool GPT algorithm project you make or, you know, whatever we develop, in the end, we have to deliver it to the end user. And still, the web, web application is going to be the, you know, the, the weapon of choice for, for most of the projects. So that's kind of my, you know, my uh, point here. Like, web development is important and we all use it, we all need it. And in a way, it's also why, you know, why it's hard. So there is definitely more space for progressing. So this is why, why we are doing it you know, in the first place. And just kind of high-level goals of Wasp. So first of all, one of, of the main pains we felt when developing with Web in general, as you already know, all of you know, you know it's kind of not notorious today, is the boil boilerplate. So we just want to write, write less boilerplate. On the other hand, you know, it's so many web frameworks, so many different libraries, so many state managers, and it always takes a bit of time to figure out, you know, how to use it the best, to, you know, learn from the community. Somebody has to set the best practices, which is great, but sometimes you just want to get, you know, get the stuff done and you want somebody else to tell you, you know, what is the best practice. So this is what Wasp does. So we make sure that the best practices come out of the box a little bit, you know, what we offer. And in the end, this is kind of the... You know, why Why you also can sometimes see a lang next to Wasp, the language part. It is because our, let's say, our high-level vision is to close the gap between specification and implementation. Specification meaning it's quite easy to, you know, specify, like say in words what your web application does. But on the other hand, you know, implementing it, especially with the latest library, with the latest state manager, can be quite tricky. So this is what we felt is the main issue these days and what we are trying to bridge with Wasp. We'll see what it means later in the, you know, in action in the, with the demos. Cool, uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, we entered beta in the end of the last year and since then actually, you know, things started kind of going uh, really good for us. So now we have about 25, 30,000 projects created and we are also backed by Y Combinator and a bunch of uh, investors who are specializing in uh, dev tools and deep tech. That's it. And also just to kind of the, the story about launch week, what you, what, you, what you said. So our last launch week, number four, was the most successful one. And we had some really good features and the community was great. And, you know, we just exploded on GitHub and users. And now it, it's really exciting time for, for Boss. We have a lot of people helping us, uh, giving us feedback. And, you know, we just have a million of ideas 
of what we want to implement next. Uh, great, and just a quick overview of how it works under the hood. So as you said, like you know, the idea is that, that you have the, so there is this backbone of your application, which is uh, both configuration. So there, there is a configuration, and basically what you do, you describe your high-level features like authentication, routing, data model, queries. And but the goal is that you know Boss does not exist in a vacuum. So it is a full stack framework and you can use React, Node.js, and Prisma. So that is one of our main theses. We are not trying to reinvent everything. We think it's very important for developers to be able to use the tools they are used to, they know, and that they're actually great at doing their jobs. So there is no, you know, there is no reason for us to try to replace React or Prisma. They're a specialized tool for, for something. And in the end, what happens is, you know, that your Wasp application compiles to pure React and Node.js application with Docker image for the backend and static files on the front end. So it's super easy to deploy to any setting, either like, you know, in your company or just on Heroku. And we'll also see more about that, but that's one of the flexibilities uh, that we get with our approach. And this is also just a quick glance of how the code actually looks like. So this is just the, what I mentioned, the configuration file describing high-level features. So it's very declarative, uh, very, let's say, human-readable. It's, you know, it's almost like a nice JSON, like a JSON, but a bit nicer to read and, and look at. So you, know, you can just say, this is my app. I have these two methods for notification, like Google, GitHub, or email, for example. Describe some routing, and it also covers both front end and back end in it. So we'll see more about that in the, in the example. And just from the visual perspective, so what actually happens is on the left side here, on the left hand side, is what developer is writing, editing. So you have your high level WASP file with configuration, and then you plug in your specific React files and Node.js files with backend logic. And what's happening on the right side? is all this code is being generated, generated under the hood for you. What, what we said, being compiled actually to pure React and Node.js code. And this is just what I said. First, you define some high-level stuff, you add your custom specific logic, and in the end, you get a fully working uh, React and Node.js application. And finally, this is also what I mentioned, just you know, kind of high-level declaration that works with Node React Prisma. Some of the cool stuff is that uh, you can also, everything works through a CLI. So we have a pretty powerful and you know encompassing CLI for Wasp. So it covers everything from database migration, starting and running your project to actual deployment. You will also see it in action. And in the end, we also use Prisma, of course. And one of the best features of Prisma in development for me is a Wasp, the Wasp, sorry, Prisma Studio. So this is you know, how, we, how we make it accessible uh, from Wasp, basically just running Wasp DB Studio. And yeah, I think that's it. Oh, actually, just the, the Prisma part. So as I said, like Prisma is great, and Prisma is what allowed us to actually build Wasp because you know if we had to rebuild Prisma first, that would be super hard. <laughs> so yes, so you know what happens with uh, with Wasp and Prisma is you know you just write your PSL as you are used to in in Wasp. You, you write Prisma, your Prisma schema in it, and the Wasp actually does all the work around it. Like we even have some extra features, like you know. My warnings when you have to run migration, you haven't yet, and all the Prisma commands are accessible to you through our Wasp CLI. When you were developing Wasp originally, uh, maybe, maybe this is a bit of a loaded question, you know, coming from Prisma, but how did you pick these pieces that you wanted to add to Wasp? How did you go into the market and sort of say like, oh, we want this product mm -hmm. to be a part of Wasp? Um, how, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a very good question. Because, you know, like Wasp by itself doesn't exist without the parts, you know, that, that you saw. So we need React, we need Node, we need Prisma, right? And for us, it was never an idea, to, it, like originally, you know, first idea of all was like, you know, let's just make our own language and you know, <laughs> like every, yeah. everybody else is complicated, like we'll just make our own thing, right? But very, very soon when we started prototyping and, you know, even before development, we realized it, it would just be like, you know, impossible because so much good work has been done on all the fronts from backend to frontend to databases to deployment. It would be impossible to, you know, replace and feud futile. It, it isn't actually a React or Node which is problem. It is like this connection part between which is not, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. so there are so many possible ways to do it. And, you know, the whole kind of this client and server split, which was introduced with SPAs, uh, that's kind of you know what's causing the problems. So that that's what we focused on in the end, and you know that's where most of the value of Wasp uh, lies in. So just to answer like how we how we pick what are we going to use, so we were kind of going after the you know the the stack that is familiar for us. So you know we used to work before even in we started from just pure vanilla JS, then jQuery, then Backbone, then Angular, 
and yeah. finally <laughs> React. So it feels like, okay, React is, you know, like now getting popular and we like the idea of, you know, how it works also. On the other hand, the Node was also what we, what we were familiar with. It's, you know, like being the same language as, uh, you know, as front-end is very helpful and the strong community around it. Uh, in the end, our own knowledge of it made us choose, uh, made us choose Node. And in the end, for the database, first, we didn't even know about Prisma. So very first version, which I'm not sure if it was even public ever, was uh, with Mongo and Mongoose, <laughs> because we, we also used Mongo before. And that was also great, but it was a lot of work. Because, you know, there wasn't so, so clear relationship you know, between data models and what we had in the actual code. So when we heard of Prisma, that sounded like, you know, a gift from, from heaven. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> you know, uh, what, what, I, what I showed you, and you're going to be familiar, and probably like a lot of, you know, listeners who are familiar with Prisma, that Wasp is actually DSL right now. So, you know, it is a domain-specific mm -hmm. language, the same as Prisma is. Because in Prisma, you have your own schema language, which you just write and, you know, things magically work. So we actually follow the same philosophy. You know, I often say, you know, what Prisma is doing for database layer, we are doing for the application logic layer. And just with that in mind, you know, Prisma actually fits perfectly like a piece of puzzle in what we are doing. Like we have two DSLs composing together. It's declarative in the same way, you know, Prisma is covering now Mongo, Postgres, and even more databases, right? So that's exactly the philosophy that we wanted to follow and that enabled, enabled us to go so much faster in, you know, with the, with the product. Awesome. Well, appreciate the the shout out as well as um, sort of the the history into what what makes Wasp so great. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and and move into the uh, demo. I think you have that okay, prepared sure. for us. So I just showed you know a presentation a bunch of things which was maybe a bit hard to follow. So I would just now try to make it you know live and a bit more uh, kind of accessible. Uh, cool. So first thing that I did here is I prepared the small to do app. And let's actually first run it and see what it looks like. So, you know, as I said, like everything is happening. So we have our files here. We have our main dot, main dot was file, which has the high level stuff. And you'll see later, we actually have the source code and prison migrations. So what we have to do is we just run wasp start. And wasp start. So we just run wasp start and that's going to do all the work for us. It's going to run a client server, backend server, and even database in this case, and you'll just be able to see our application. Just wait for a second to load. Uh huh. Okay, it's right here. Cool. And now let's try logging in to see what's going to happen. Yes. Okay, great. We have our Prisma uh, to do app here. So let's say, say hello. Prisma forks, great, and you know we can market it down. Cool. And now, first interesting thing, which I think you know that we can show is uh, the odd, the odd part is especially interesting, and I think it, it demonstrates well, you know, the the power of uh, Wasp approach. So let's go back to our uh, odd screen, sign up or login screen, and show how it looks like in the code. So if you go to code. Here we have our main.wasp file, and this basically this part is the auth configuration. So this is all this is all you have to do when you're defining your auth. You say, okay, I will have some methods, you know, give me username and password, give me Google, for example. And now you have a couple of things, you know, which have some optional default values, but you can make them, of course, specify if you know, if auth fails, go back to login. This is also data model which is being used as a user or principal, as some call it. And this is also the part which makes uh, the social login work. You can take a look at that later. And that's it pretty much. So what happens when you define this is that the Wasp then exposes uh, the components. So Wasp does everything there for you. It actually generates the whole UI component that you can use immediately in your code. So now on the left-hand side here, you can see that you know we have... So this is actually the source code. If, you know, besides main.wasp, this is where all of your code lives. And this is React code and S code. So now if you take a look at the client code right here, we have our odd part. And I mean, you can structure your code whatever you want. You just have to have those three top level directories, client, server, and shared code. So for example, let's take a look at the login page. So right here, I'm using Chakra as a, as a CSS framework. So what you have to do is just import this login form from this path, wasp odd forms login. And all you do, like you, you, just, you just put it somewhere, and of course, you can also customize the appearance, right? So there is like a simple object. You can change brand, uh, you can change logo, you can, you can change you know, the, the, the basic stuff. 
And once you did that, immediately, of course, it's going to appear on the screen. So you don't have even to implement your own forms. If you want, you can customize them, you can implement them. But Postport it gives you a starting, you know, like a nice, nicely looking starting uh, thing out of the box. So now let's, let's, let's do one more cool thing actually now. Uh, let's go back to our main.wasp and let's add another provider. So let, let's say, you know, we also want to add GitHub. Just type something GitHub. And that's it. We don't have any custom configuration here for it. And I will just save it. And what we, let's go back to our application. Ah, and now we have GitHub. See here, right? And we can actually immediately use it to log in. We just take maybe a couple of ah right here. <laughs> okay, so now we are we are you know logged in with GitHub. So the cool the, and the cool thing here was that you know the, the so I mean we just we just saw the button right, but actually what what was happened under the hood is that was generated the full stack code for GitHub login. So both the for the front end component was changed and all the logic that has to happen on the back end was also generated and plugged in into the right places. So, you know, if you take a look at the actually generated code right here, so dot wasp is where all the code is generated. And here we can see, you know, again, we have the client code, the server code, and here is the client code. So under auth section, all these things are what is being generated from, you know, this, this here specific declaration, let's say that you did in your uh, configuration wasp uh, file. So all the forms here, helpers, pages, so all of this, so we have GitHub and Google. So all of this is being generating under the hood. So all of this works, you know, without without any third party services, and you can host it anywhere for for free. So this is the first thing I just I just want to show. Any any questions here? Anything that you think would be interesting to cover? I guess what would be interesting from my perspective is how how does this hook into to Prisma? You know, when when you're developing your Wasp DSL, let's say you have a database that exists already, right, with your users, and you want to start using Wasp. What does that connection process or integration process look like? I mean, mostly. So I, I would say the first part is basically you have to have your Prisma schema, right? Once you have your Prisma schema, then mm -hmm. then then you are ready to go, right? I, I think I think the Prisma has the okay. introspection part, right, which can basically even take the yeah like the existing the, the, and so basically I would just I would just move. From the perspective of having a Prisma schema, so okay, great, cool. So this part here, this is the PSL uh, part which I was mentioning. Uh, okay. So what okay. happens here is that you know in in dot wasp configuration file, all you have to do is open you know this this text, and this is also you know where I, where our logo came from. Right. And then basically now you are you are in 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 Prisma world. You know now you basically you're writing PSL, and you know you can do all the stuff that you that, that you know that, that you are used to in Prisma. So we define hey our user has you know password username. And this is a system for external auth with so you know Google and login with so, and this is basically what what is powering the the social login. But yeah, the secret is pretty much that once you define here your Prisma schema, then it becomes accessible throughout your whole application. So this this one is pretty simple. So I don't I actually I don't a lot of to show. But for example, I have this other one, mm -hmm. this other application which has a bit more complex uh, schema. This is like daily reflection, so you can every day. You can fill out what happened, what was good, what was bad. It's one of my uh, pet projects. Awesome. So uh, let's just check out. Let's just check out the schema here. Okay. So yeah, we have user. It has his its reflections, and basically what happens next? You probably you know you probably want to write some Prisma queries, right, to get access to your database, get some data out, and similar. So for example, in Wasp, then you would do it on the server side, and you would do a query. So what happens here is you can say, okay, I have my query which is going to get reflections, and automatically, you know, when you define your reflection data model, Wasp or as we call it, entity in in Wasp, Wasp is going to create a fully typed version of this object for you, right? And you can just import it from Wasp entities and basically use it in your uh, function definition. So you say, hey, you know, this is like a query which takes nothing and returns a list of reflections. And then basically from here you are able to use so we you know Prisma SDK from context entities reflection now it now it's purely using Prisma SDK so you can say all the regular stuff like hey order it uh, give me stuff where user is actually appropriate user so all of this feels I mean it is it is Prisma mm -hmm. so uh, this is it so you you pretty much get full stack type safety so we have our own type safe RPC so you know we abstract the API part so it's super easy you know just just to import the types and write your queries. And also in the end, they immediately become accessible on the front end. So now if you go back to front end, for example, let's go to our here dashboard page. 
your dashboard. So here we are just going to import. Once we define our query and we implement it in Node, we can just here say, hey, I want to use this get reflections query, right? And then we, you know, we just use it via uh, hooks. So basically we are using use query also as a part of our stack. So you just use use query, define your you know, get reflections and load all the data uh, here. So yeah, basically it's a type safe uh, RPC powered by, by Prisma and Wasp. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's certainly uh, quite an easy setup just to get, say, hey, I want this query to be available, make it happen. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty Yeah, amazing. exactly, exactly. And you know, we had some extra stuff like, you know, type safe stuff and also auto caching validation, which you can either use or you can go with optimistic updates. So we also we have support for all of these primitives that you would usually have to implement yourself or you know try to cobble up together libraries to make it work. Right. So we offer a setup out of the box, you know, which works, and we actually manage the whole setup for you. So you are not responsible for maintaining your you know chain of three or four libraries which you are using. Yeah, and and one updates, and then that breaks the other three, and then you have to. <laughs> Exactly, because you know, people often say, but you know, I can just use a boilerplate, you know, which uh, sets up everything for me and you know, I can just get started, which yes, it's great. But in the end, you are the one responsible for all the code which was generated for you. And when there is a new version, you have to update it. There is nobody to help you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is actually one of the reasons also why we went the framework approach and not, not just, you know, the code starter approach. So I have a couple of uh, actually more things to show unless you have some uh, questions right now. No, please. Let's, let's look at them. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I mean, kind of to, you know, to, to go back to the, let's say main, uh, you know, main premise of WASP is basically to have a framework, which has a high level understanding of your, so I'll just go back to, to the main, main file here. So, you know, the main point of WASP was to have a framework, which understands, let's say like as much as possible, understand your application. And, you know, we have this compiler step, so nothing is happening in the runtime. Uh, everything with, with Wasp is happening in the compile time. So even before any code is generated, you know, Wasp already understands, oh, you have pages, you have routes, uh, you have your, you know, like uh, old methods and similar. So, you know, that makes a, that gives us, that gives us a position to basically decide what to do before we actually generate your app. Like, you know, we can say, okay, generate this code in this way, or no, no maybe it's better to optimize it this way, right? Uh, I often compare it to, you know, SQL query planning. You're probably familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. when you write your query, then of course, Query Planner is going to make all this work for you under the hood, which you are not even aware of, right? And I mean, it's only possible because DSL is a, a compiled language which can do that in compile time, right? So we kind of replicated the same logic. And the Wasp is also, I mean, it's starting to do this, but the main you know, excitement is that uh, we have much more possibilities that we could do now that we have this setup. So for example, uh, we just experimented a bit you know, with a fun way to visualize uh, how your Wasp app looks like. So if we go sure. here, just have to write Wasp Studio. Now that's running, let's let's open it. So now we can see here the, vis the, the visualization of your Wasp application and you know actually what Wasp sees uh, when it's compiling your application. So it's right here. Like you know, you have your application, for example, okay, it's using SQLite, and you have these three methods for identification. On the left side, it knows that you have three data models, for example, and that this one is being used as a you know, principal, as a user. And on the right side, we can see all the different routes and to which pages they lead. And for example, this page is private, you know, only logged in user can access it. So that's kind of you know, like a, a cool thing about Wasp. All of this is being understood before any code is being generated. So we can optimize it in different ways, you know, make decisions, uh, and kind of very similar to a SQL Query Planner that I just, I just mentioned. It's awesome. Yeah, wow, this is a a super slick sort of setup of, of your application. I'm sure as an application gets more and more complex, this graph can be more and more useful to sort of keep track of what things are going on and how things relate. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, awesome. you know, it's, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite simple now, but even I, I always, uh, I'm always like, wow, this looks really great <laughs> when yeah, I see it for, for my application. And like, you know, in the future, it might be even possible to have some kind of, you know, GUI on top. Like, for example, you might add the new routes from here, or you might change some things about your page from here, right? So, you know, this is all because of the kind of this DSL approach you're taking. So it might, you know, we might uh, get to some quite cool features uh, in, the, in the future. 
so Matia, it's been so great talking with you and, and learning a lot more about Wasp and sort of how you've built this, this product on top of Prisma. Um, now, I, I'd love to sort of get your, your final thoughts, sort of where do you think Wasp is going and, and what's, what's exciting you about how Wasp and Prisma can work together? Thank you very much, John, once again, you know, for inviting me and for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, you know, like we are big fans of Prisma, as, as you might know. And I mean, Prisma is the integral part of, uh, of Wasp. And, you know, like we see it as a very important stepping stone for us. And it would, be, it would have been like really hard to build what we did if there weren't for Prisma and, you know, all the work that, that you are doing. And yes, I mean, for us, you know, like we just want to build a way to build full stack web apps easier and faster without, you know, dealing with all the small minute AI that, you know, developers, why we get, you know, this query, query and answers in Google when we search for it. So, yeah, we just, we're just very excited about reaching 1.0 and adding more features and kind of expanding on all that, you know, that, that, that we have seen. And yeah, I think we are on the great way to, you know, to keep working with Prisma and Prisma is also introducing new features daily that, that we can use. You know, maybe one day we can even split Prisma and Prisma into multiple files. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, actually, no, no, no. But yeah, no, just a very good community and uh, the whole development team is super responsive. So I'm just super excited to keep our collaboration. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, also looking forward to, to Wasp 1.0 you know that'll definitely be exciting time so so looking forward to that launch week that i'm sure that'll be a really exciting one